Welcome to Eye on the Money, the television show that gives you insights into how to improve your financial well-being as well as how to make your money work for you. I'm your host, Ingrid Nantege. On today's episode, we'll take a look at retirement and how to ensure that you're ready when the time comes. According to a survey conducted by Zamara on the retirement benefits industry in Kenya, around 20% of the employed population is covered by a retirement benefit scheme. This is equivalent to 3.2 million people. This means that there are around 20 million people who don't have a retirement plan in place. Similarly, a 2017 report by Sight on Investments indicates that the retirement benefits assets as a percentage of GDP stood at 13.4% compared to more developed markets like the USA at 84.1% and the UK at 105.3%. The industry has registered great growth from both member contribution and good performances leading to the assets under management growing to 1.16 trillion shillings in 2018 from 287.7 billion shillings in 2008. This denotes a compound annual growth rate of 14.3% over a period of 10 years. To better understand the importance of saving for retirement and how to go about it, I'm joined by Evelyn Galaka, legal consultant at N World Financial Services. You're welcome, Evelyn. Thank you very much. I'm very, very happy to have you here to speak about retirement and why it's important. Thank you very much, Ingrid. Now, you should start us off yes. by letting us know why is it important to save for retirement? Saving for retirement is perhaps and probably the most important decision you'll ever make. Having served uh, in Kenya and Uganda, NWF, a pension administrator, we impact over 40,000 lives. And this is a story we see every day in our interactions with employees. A person enters employment, whether formal or informal, they don't save. They use the bulk of the money to everyday expenses. You perhaps even take your children to the best schools, which is very good. And you don't think of, let me save about 20%, 10%, 30%. And in lieu of how the social fabric is changing, the thinking is, when I grow old, my children will take, take care, care of me. me. Now, your kids go to school, they pursue their careers, and by the time they start the race of life, they barely have enough to save for their own families and take care of you. So what happens to you? You're retired, you are enjoying a certain a standard of life, and now, you are not even used to the idea of poverty, perhaps. You find yourself in your golden years when you've been saying, I cannot wait to retire so that you can enjoy life. You are, and you do not have the energy as you used to have. You do not have enough income to sustain you. For instance, Ingrid, did you know there's a research that was done by the International Labor Organization? And they were saying, at retirement, an employee should ensure that they have at least 50 to 70% income replacement ratio. Wow. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means if we have to use a rough figure of an estimate of 100,000, it means at retirement, you're supposed to have planned yourself in a way that you can have at least 50 to 70,000 to take care of your needs, to sustain you. And you will agree with me, Ingrid, at your old age, don't you want to eat well? <laughs> at my old age? <laughs> Of when course, that time I comes. most definitely want to eat well. I would like to sustain <laughs> my standard of living. Exactly. Don't you want to get the best medical care? Absolutely. Don't you want to have a peace of mind? Yes. Did you know why it is the most important decision? The people who retire without having a retirement plan, they actually die sooner. We have statistics and research to that effect. Right. One of the things we are doing at NWOLF, being the leading pension administrator in both Kenya and Uganda, we've, we, d we have been engaged in innovative research on retirement with the Institute of Human Resource Management and Strathmore University, where we are able to extract this data to see how are people ready for, are you ready for retirement? Right now as I speak, maybe not. I don't know if I have that f between 50,000 to say <laughs> you are talking about. I, I'm sure I have a lot more work to do. According to the research we have the statistics, we are seeing only one in seven Kenyans 
is ready for retirement. Wow, wow. What does that mean? That means we need to do something and we need to do it now. And that's what we've been doing in NMELF. We are engaging in research so that we are getting data and being able to do something about it to make sure that people have a dignified retirement life. Mm -hmm. I can assure you there is no dignity in being broke and poor mm -hmm. When you no are one even wants to hang out with a broke person. Exactly. Now imagine you're broke and you're 70 years. Wow. And you used not to be a broke person. Imagine that. Okay. You've used their tactics. Yes. <laughs> but now I have to ask. Yes. How soon is it to start? Like how soon or early should one start when it comes to save for retirement? Because we see a situation where... We see even some secondary school children, you know, having jobs yes. here and there. We see people fresh out of the university, people who are still in the university. How soon or early is it or should one start when it comes to saving for, for retirement? Okay. For the personal financial programs we take, we always say, as soon as you start having any source of income, any income coming your way, start retiring. For instance, did you know if you just started saving a thousand shillings, a thousand shillings every month and you saved it for 10 years and you're saving this money in a retirement benefit scheme. Mm -hmm. That means what happens in a retirement benefit scheme, you have a board of trustees. The board of trustees basically they oversee, they manage the pension fund exercising a fiduciary duty. However, they also have delegated services. They outsource an investment manager who invests the money and an administrator who oversees and helps in the management. Now, you're removing your 1,000 every day mm -hmm. and you go on with your business. You go on and do other things. In 10 years, do you know how much money you will have? Assuming this investment manager has given you just a moderate interest of 10%. Right. Do you know how much it will be in 10 years? Tell me. It will be 1.2 million. Assuming you started this in eight, when you were 18 years old, when you were doing that casual job that was giving you maybe right. 2,000, 3,000, and you put 1,000 aside, meaning as you get better and more formal employment, you will keep adding your investment. Right. So the person this time, this person is in 28 years old, yeah. this individual, they already have 1.2 million. Now, and that we're just using an example because at some point you will increase it once you see the value. Yes. So you should start immediately have any source of income. Something comes your way, save. You save and save it specifically, name it, this is my retirement fund. This is my retirement fund because one thing that is a reality, you will retire one day right. and it will come soon. I'm sure even in our country you have seen people having debates that my retirement age is not has not arrived. Right. In fact, my birth certificate had a problem. Have you seen that? I have. People contesting their, their ages. Right. This is because they don't have the confidence. They don't feel prepared. And, and some of the mistakes... It's a scary moment. Yes. And some of the mistakes people are doing is, you're scared, maybe you're, uh, let's assume you're 53 or 52, and you make a mistake, you take the little money you have, and you go and start maybe a construction project. In maybe even you go to your native place, and at the moment, maybe you're doing the foundation before you complete the house, that money is gone. Right. And you're not working, you're retired. What happens? What so happens? <laughs> how soon should you start saving for right and now. planning for your retirement? <laughs> right now. If not yesterday. Okay. <laughs> so you mentioned <laughs> yes. that a retirement benefit scheme yes. is one of the ways that one can, you know, make use of to save for retirement. Yes. What are the other avenues? Is that the only way I can, you know, ensure that I'll have a good retirement, or what are some of the ways I can, you know, take advantage of? Retirement benefit scheme is one of the safest ways okay. because what it does for you is, assuming you've saved your money, assuming you have 10 million or 5 million or 3 million, and maybe you don't even have a plan or you're not sure, what will you do? You will take your lump sum, take it to an insurance company, an approved one, with the appropriate regulators, and purchase an annuity. What is an annuity, Ingrid? Tell me. You're going to tell me. Evelyn, you're here to tell me all these things. And that's <laughs> what I'm about to tell you. An tell annuity, me. when that time comes, you will go with your money, your accumulated amount of money. This money is all the contributions you did. And there's something I must mention. When you go to employment and you find an employer has a pension scheme, this is what it means. He may say that I will deduct you every month, Ingrid, 10% and put it in a retirement pension scheme. But on the same measure, I'll also deduct you to contribute for yourself. 
So when this money is put in the, it is invested and it gets interest. Mm. So the money is growing for over years, it's growing. So by the time you're retiring, when you see your statement, you'll see you have huge sums of money. So if you don't have a plan, what do you do? That money, once it's paid out to you, and in some schemes it's compulsory, you will go and look for an insurance company of your choice mm. and purchase a product called an annuity. When you go to the insurance company, they calculate that benefit and they agree. For the rest of your life, for the rest of your life, for the rest, for of, the rest your of your life, life, breathing, walking, and happy. For the rest of your life. Yes. The insurance company takes that risk because you brought, um, let's assume 10 million, just a figure, or 5 million or 3 million. We are going to pay you 60,000 for the rest of your life. So you've used your accumulated lump sum to go purchase what? An annuity. Mm. But as much as you are contributing for your pension, I'm sure you are also saving and investing in other. So what does pension tell you? It gives you a secure and a safe net. Mm. As a, because you could have used your amount, maybe you purchased a property somewhere, or you've used that amount, you've uh, turned into business. No matter what happens, you have a constant and a secure income for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. And in that case, should someone not pick your calls at 80, 90, is there a reason to worry? I'm sorted for the rest <laughs> of my life. Yes. Now, Evelyn. Yes. Let's talk about this gentleman, yes. this lady yes. in the informal sector. Yes. They're saying, my boss is not putting aside you know, this much for me. I don't know how to go about this. Yes. So how can someone who's in part of the informal sector mm -hmm. go about saving for retirement? That's a very good question, Ingrid. And I, I'd like to inform you that, for instance, at Enwealth, we believe in innovative products and innovative approach. We have a personal pension plan which is regulated by the Retirement Benefits Authority. What happens in this plan, it gives room for people in the informal sector. You're in an informal business where you can make a decision and say, every month I'm going to contribute this amount of money, and this money once you contribute it, assuming, let us use now an example of 2000, 2000. You're contributing it every month in a personal pension plan where the regulatory framework, that plan has trustees, it has uh, delegated uh, service providers who are approved and licensed by the Retirement Benefits Authority. So what does the investment manager do? They invest this money. Mm -hmm. They're investing it. So your 2,000, by the end of the year, it is probably 3,000. And you continue doing that, doing that because you will also retire at some point, even if you're in the informal sector. So we do have personal pension plans. So it does work well for the people in the informal sector. And one thing people should know, in these pension schemes, they are, the, the regulation is very, very effective. Did you know we have annual general meetings? We have quarterly meetings. These quarterly meetings, what happens? The board of trustees, they come sit on a table. They have the investment manager. They have us, their pension administrator there. And any other appointed service, and they give reports. The fund manager will be asked, you took this fund, where did you invest? Right. I invested in stocks, I invested in real estate, I invested in fixed income. Why did you make that decision? Because for pension schemes, one thing I can mention, people to have the safety. A fund manager does not invest according to their whims. There's a policy. Mm. This policy is filed with the regulator, the Retirement Benefits Authority, and it has caps on where and how they can invest. Right. And there's a demand on the fund manager to give returns and make sure the capital is not eroded for whatever reason. Their work is to generate returns, invest and generate returns. returns. Now, Evelyn, yes. we have to take a quick break. Yes. He said discussion, yes. very important information. Yes. Right now, what you've just told me is I really have no choice. I have to save for my retirement. Yes. And you're going to keep telling me more about this when we come back. Okay. We're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, I'm going to sample some of your social media comments. So do keep them coming in on our Metropole TV handle on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Eye on the Money. Today we're looking at saving for your retirement. Evelyn, we're going to sample real quick some of our social media feedback and I'll read some of our comments and then you'll respond to some of them. Mm -hmm. I'll go straight to Facebook where Diana, Diana Nanono wants to know, 
what if I'm approaching retirement? How can I ensure that I have enough to last? Because you mentioned, I feel like this is a very valid question because you pointed out that you have to start early enough, put in as little as you can. But now what happens to this person who's maybe in their 40s, even approaching 50? They're late. They're already late in this game. How do they somehow manage, make up for lost time? Okay. What you do, I'll answer this question in two ways. Right. Huh? If you're in formal employment and already you're making pension contributions and you feel that they're not enough, maybe it's, you should do more, what do you do? The first part you should start. First, go ask for your statement, find out how much it is. Then, project how much, what kind of life do you want to live in retirement? And there's something called additional voluntary contributions. As much as you might be, as perhaps you're working, and the employer has said it's 10%, 10%, you, it's okay for you to say, okay, employer, give me 10%, but I, I want to remove 20% for myself. I will make voluntary additional contribution. Mm. What will this be doing? Suppose you're at maybe 46, 45. You'll have a span of three years to double what you could have contributed in maybe six years. You double it you in, with that aim. Mm. Be very intentional, very deliberate. If you are in an informal sector, you're not in a personal pension plan, and you're 45, what do you do? The same thing. You have to make a deliberate choice. If you have to get an accountability, partner, do it. If you have to come for us for personal financial management, come. Because we, we do not give a, just a, a calm all fit all solutions. Right. We, give one size fits yes. all. we give customized solutions at work. We look at your portfolio. Where are you? What do you have? What is the best way forward? At this point, what kind of investments should you make? For instance, did you know that when someone is in their 18 years, 20, 25, below 30, you can take the risk of doing stocks, shares, because as a long-term investment. The, but the risk. They are, they are very <laughs> risky, but the higher the risk. The greater the return. The greater the returns. Right. But somebody who's at 45 years old, if they were to take such risks, mm. what would happen to even their health? Oof. You just had these stocks pressure. dropped. Yeah. You will die. It so will. that's why you need, Kenyans need personal financial management training where it is personalized to you. So it is not too late. There are solutions. There are ways to, you just need to come, look, where am I now? And then you work from there. But whatever you do, additional voluntary contributions is the way forward. Mm. Let me assure you, the social fabric is changing. Right. We are not living in the eras where nowadays you're seeing old people, they're being taken to homes. Yeah. Leave alone money, even visiting them. Yeah. Some people have to be dragged to a right. home to see their own parent or their own relative. So there is a solution. And for that person, should they need, uh, we have, a, go to our Twitter handle at NWealth Kenya, and just send us a message, we'll contact you, and we'll be able, we'll be able to guide you, and I assure you, you will get value for our service. I like that. Yes. Even I'll take one more from our social media, and then we'll go back into our discussion. Yes. Um, Francis, wants to know yes. what should I consider when saving for retirement? What you need to consider, I'll take you back to something I told you earlier. The International Labor Organization says a, an employee needs to have at least an income replacement of between 50 to 70 years. Right now, you know what your lifestyle is. You know the kind of life you want to do. So you need to save in a way that at the time you retire, make sure you have at, at the very least 50% of what you have now guaranteed for the rest of your life. Don't you want to live long? It makes me feel like I'm not <laughs> doing enough. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want to? These yeah. things are real. It sounds it's like a true. joke, but if you were to go and see, many people after retirement, they don't last over five years, especially if you didn't plan for it. You become frustrated. The next thing that happens, you become sick. And let me give you this as a bonus. When we are working, especially in formal employment, we enjoy medical cover. I have, a, I have a cold, I'm not feeling well, and you go and you're treated with a medical card. Then when you retire, what happens? The medical card is gone. Because you're not in employment right. anymore. And at that time, when do you need the doctor most? When you're 25 or when you're 55? When you're 55. 55. So if you didn't plan for your retirement, and when you come, for instance, in Enmouth, we have the our Anaya. It's a health cover for retirement. You're, you prefund your health insurance at retirement so that once you transition to retirement, you go on as if nothing happened. 
you still have a health cover and you still have the other option of the annuit we talked about where you won't use your savings for pension to buy a medical cover. For those who don't have a medical cover, medication has become, it's quite, uh, it's quite something just to go for consultation. Uh, if you want to go for treatment abroad, maybe you have a complication. So it is extremely important. Start saving now and not tomorrow right. for retirement because it is coming and the social fabric is changing. Yes. Wow. Yes. Thank you very much for your social media feedback. Keep them coming at Metropole TV on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, Evelyn, just to dive back into the conversation. Yes. I have to ask. This, you know, these days, youth, young people, like, you know, they get tired of jobs real quick. Yes. So today I'll be in this job. Next month I'll be in the next job. Three months later I'll be in the next job. Five months later I'll be ready to move on to the next job. So a regular job hopper, how does this affect their benefits when it comes to pension? Someone who can't just stay in one place when it comes to like employment. Today I am at Enwell, <laughs> tomorrow I'm at here, the yes, next day yes. I'm here. How do, will this affect me when it comes to my pension at the end of the day? It will be really affect you. Let me tell you, in the corporate sector in particular, there's a big, big challenge of the millennial uh, changing jobs every one year for six months, right. even, even three months, people are changing it's jobs. It's true. So what happens in the framework we have for our pension schemes, once you change jobs, that's the only time you're able to access your pension. So you go work for a year. Remember you were contributing 10% and the employer is contributing for you. When you're leaving that job, you make the application and you access the money instead of transferring that to the next em pension scheme or leaving it there to grow. So what does that happen? In maybe you change jobs seven times. And when you get that money, what do you do? Maybe you go buy a car, you go for a holiday. It really affects because you might find you've been saving in a pension scheme, now you're 50. Because of accessing it, at retirement you find you have a very minimal amount that may not be able to even purchase you a good auntie. Wow. And even if you were given a lump sum, how long would that lump sum how long, if you, how long would you be able to sustain it if you were not able to sustain it in your youthful years? So what we normally tell young people out there and employees, do not access your money when you're changing jobs. Transfer that money either to another, if the next employer has a pension, transfer it there. Right. Let your compound your money, let the interest grow. There are people who retire with even an accumulated pension of 20 million, another 30 and even more because they did not access since the first they started working it. Do not have the, do resist the temptation. Right. That's what I would say, resist. The temptation to access your money. Resist the temptation. Access it at 50. And in the unfortunate case, perhaps someone will ask, why am I saving so much and I can't access it and it's my money? And what happens if I die? What should, what will be the benefit? One of the things you should know that when it comes to pension benefits, the only way for your benefits to go to your dependents and your beneficiaries is through nomination, just like an insurance policy, is through nominations. And once in the unfortunate instance a person passes on, the people who you nominate, your children, your spouse, they are able to access this money even as long as all the documentation is right within 30 right. days. That means as much as you've passed on, it will go and benefit mm your children yeah and one of the things we do we noticed in our research where most of these uh, people we surveyed they wanted their children to get a good education so if you have died and you have some pension money within 30 days 30 days your dependents can access this money and life will go on as as usual so right. it is never money wasted in either circumstance mm. so don't access this money, resist the temptation. You will celebrate in your golden years. You'll be a very, very happy golden age. Yes. Evelyn. Yes. I feel like this has, a very, has been a very, very important and vital conversation. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> you came to instill fear in us. Yes. But it's been, it's necessary. It's yes. important. It's a fact. Yes. We're all going to get old. Yes. We're all going to get to a certain point in time where we don't have that constant income stream coming in. Yes. So it is very, very important that we save for retirement. Yes. Thank you very much for joining us here today. We will carry on this conversation because I'm sure there's a lot more yes. we need to talk about. 
However, that's it for me today on Eye on the Money. But here's your financial tip of the day. Tip number one, monitor your investments in pre-retirement. Money needed five to 10 years into retirement is most vulnerable, so avoid overspending. If that money is lost, it's harder to recover over time. Look for investments with predictable income sources. But remember, the more predictable the income, the lower the return. Tip number two, plan for inflation as a fact of life. Inflation and rising prices can eat away at, buy at the buying power of retirement funds. When planning for retirement, just assume prices will go up and be planning for it. Talk with your spouse or significant other about retirement spending. Be open with your spouse or significant other about how much you think you should and will spend in retirement so that you're both on the same page. That's all I've had for you today. If you have any questions on how to make your money work for you or where to spot investment opportunities, we invite you to visit the Metropole Terminal for in-depth reports on various areas of the economy. I've been your host, Ingrid Nantege. Have a good night.